Now that you can see the differences in how Python handles the different execution modes, it's useful for you to know some best practices to use. These will apply whenever you want to write code that you can run as a script and import into another module or an interactive session. You'll learn about four best practices to make sure that your code can serve a dual purpose. These are one, putting most code into a function or class. Two, using name to control execution of your code. Three, using a function called main to contain the code you want to run. And finally, four, which is calling other functions from main. So let's break these down, starting with putting most code into a function or class. Remember that the Python interpreter executes all the code in a module when it imports the module. Sometimes the code you write will have side effects that you want the user to control, such as running a computation that takes a long time, or writing to a file on the disk, or printing information that will clutter the user's terminal. In these cases, you want the user to control triggering the execution of this code, rather than letting the Python interpreter execute the code when it imports the module. Therefore, the best practice here is to include most code inside of a function or a class. This is because when the Python interpreter encounters the def or class keywords, it only stores these definitions for later use and doesn't actually execute them until you tell it to. So let's walk through an example. Here we have a file that we've called best underscore practices underscore one dot py to demonstrate this idea. In this code, you first import sleep from the time module. Sleep pauses the interpreter for however many seconds you give as an argument and will produce a function that takes a long time to run for this example. Next, you use print to print a sentence describing the purpose of this code. Then you define a function called process data that does five things. Firstly, it prints some output to tell the user that the data processing is starting. Then it modifies the input data. Next, it pauses the execution for three seconds using the sleep function. Then it prints some output to tell the user that the processing is finished. And finally, it returns the modified data. Now let's see what happens when you execute this file as a script on the command line. The Python interpreter will execute the from time import sleep and the print lines that are outside the function definition. And then it will create the definition of the function called process data. Then the script will exit without doing anything further because the script does not have any code that executes process data. And this is a result of running this file as a script. The output that we can see here is the result of the first print statement. Notice that importing from time and defining process data produce no output. Specifically, the outputs of the calls to print that are inside the definition of process data are not printed. When you import this file in an interactive session or another module, the Python interpreter will perform exactly the same steps as when it executes the file as a script. Once the Python interpreter imports the file, you can use any variables, classes, or functions defined in the module you've imported. To demonstrate this, we'll use the Python interactive interpreter. So we'll start the interactive interpreter and then we'll type import best underscore practices underscore one. So the only output we can see is from the first print call defined outside process data. Importing from time and defining process data produced no output, just like when you executed the code from the command line. So what if you want process data to execute when you run the script from the command line, but not when the Python interpreter imports the file? Well, you can use the if name equals main idiom to determine the execution context and conditionally run process data only when name is equal to main. So you can either modify your file or like I've done here, I've created a new file called best underscore practices two that adds this code to the script. In this code, we've added a conditional statement that checks the value of name. This conditional will evaluate to true when name is equal to the string main. Remember that the special value of main for the name variable means the Python interpreter is executing your script and not importing it. Inside the conditional block, you have added four lines of code. In lines 13 and 14, you're creating a variable called data that stores the data that you've acquired from the web and printing it. In lines 13 and 14, you're creating a variable called data that stores the data that you've acquired from the web and prints it. In line 15, you're processing this data. And in line 16, you're printing the modified data. Now let's run our new script from the command line 
to see how the output will change. First, the output shows the results of the print call outside of process data. After that, the value of data is printed. This happened because the variable name has the value of main when the Python interpreter executes the file as a script. So the conditional statement evaluated to true. Next, the script called our process data function and passed data in for modification. When process data executes, it prints some status messages to the output. Finally, the value of modified data is printed. Now let's check what happens when you import the file from the interactive interpreter or another module. Notice that you get the same behavior as before you added the conditional statement at the end of the file. This is because the name variable had the value best practices, so Python did not execute the code inside the block, including process data, because the conditional statement evaluated to false. Now you're able to write Python code that can be run from the command line as a script and import it without unwanted side effects. Next, you're going to learn about how to write your code to make it easy for other Python programmers to follow what you mean. Any languages such as C and Java and several others define a special function that must be called main that the operating system automatically calls when it executes the compiled program. This function is often called the entry point because it's where execution enters the program. By contrast, Python does not have a special function that serves as the entry point to a script. You can actually give the entry point in a Python script any name you want. Although Python does not assign any significance to a function called main, the best practice here is to name the entry point function main anyways. That way, any other programmers who read your script immediately know that this function is the starting point of the code that accomplishes the primary task of the script. In addition, main should contain any code that you want to run where the Python interpreter executes the file. This is better than putting the code directly into the conditional block because a user can reuse main if they import your module. So now let's check the third version of our script to help understand this concept. In this version, we've added the definition of main that includes the code that was previously inside the conditional block. And then we've changed the conditional block so that it executes main. If you run this code as a script or import it, you'll get the same output as before. Another common practice in Python is to have the main function execute other functions rather than including the task accomplishing code in main. This is especially useful when you compose your overall task from several smaller subtasks that can execute independently. For example, you may have a script that does the following. Reads a file from a source that could be a database, a file on a disk or a web API, processes the data, and finally writes the process data to another location. If you implement each of these subtasks in separate functions, then it's easy for you or another user to reuse a few of the steps and ignore the ones you don't want. Then you can create a default workflow in main and you can have the best of both worlds. Whether to apply this practice to your code is a judgment call on your part. Splitting the work into several functions makes reuse easier, but increases the difficulty for someone else trying to interpret your code because they have to follow several jumps in the flow of the program. So let's look at the final version of our script called best underscore practices underscore four. Stepping through this code, the first nine lines of the file have the same content that they had before. The second function definition on line 11 creates and returns some sample data. The third function definition on line 16 simulates writing the modified data to a database. On line 20, main is defined. In this example, we've modified main so that it calls the data reading, data processing, and data writing functions in turn. First, the data is created from read data from web. This data is passed to process data, which returns the modified data. Finally, modified data is passed into write data to database. The last two lines of the script are the conditional block that checks name and runs main if the statement is true. Now let's run the whole processing pipeline from the command line. You can see that the Python interpreter executed main, which executed read data from web, process data, and write data to database. However, you can also import this file and reuse process data for a different input data source. First, you need to import the file, and then you can give it the shortened name of BP for this code. The import process caused the Python interpreter to execute all of the lines of code in the file. Now that BP is imported, you can use those imported functions. 
create a variable named data and set its value to the string data from a file instead of reading the data from the web. Then reuse the process data and the write data to database functions from the file. In this case, you take advantage of reusing the code instead of defining all of the logic in main. So that was quite a lot to take in. So here's a recap of the four key best practices about main in Python that you just saw. Number one, put code that takes a long time to run or has other effects on the computer in a function or class so that you can control exactly when that code is executed. Two, use the different values of name to determine the context and change the behavior of your code with a conditional statement. Three, you should name your entry point function main in order to communicate the intention of the function, even though Python does not assign any special significance to a function called main. And lastly, number four, if you want to reuse functionality from your code, define the logic in functions outside main and call those functions from within main. In the next lesson, you will review everything you've learned in this course.